Okay, guys and gals, we have got three things to open tonight. Onyx Preferred Players Autographed Baseballs, some Court Kings Basketball, and AAF Football. I know, right? So, as usual, we have a little bit of pre-break information that we go over before we start ripping into our boxes and our packs, so let's get rolling with that. First up there, feedback. Automated 100%. That way you don't ever, ever have to wait on me. Anytime you leave positive feedback for me, you're going to instantly get the same in return. And of course, the second thing there is just to say thank you, because I do appreciate you bidding and breaking and chatting and hanging out with me. We are looking right now at breaks that are listed on eBay that we're going to be digging into over the next few days. So tomorrow we have a couple of new releases. Leaf Metal Draft Football comes out. We're going to open a 15-box case of that that has 75 hits in it. Yeah, you heard that right, 75. And Honors Football, a full case of that. Those are both new releases for tomorrow. And then we'll also open a 5-box half case of Gypsy Queen Baseball, which is the back half of a case that we started uh, a few days ago. And we're going to start early tomorrow night, by the way, 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Pacific. Saturday is another early start time, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. We'll open a case, uh, a second case of Leaf Metal Draft Football, and we will open a second case, 12 box inner case of Diamond Kings Baseball. Sunday will be a half case of Inception Baseball, because I found a half case of loose boxes that I forgot I had. And we will also open two cases of Revolution Basketball, the Chinese New Year Edition. Those are eight box cases. There are no there that that version wasn't sold in like inner case, master case, anything like that. So it's just two eight box cases, and the configuration is different than regular Revolution. So make sure you review that if uh, you don't know how it works for the Chinese New Year version. Diamond Kings Baseball will make another appearance on Monday night. We'll open a third 12 box inner case of it, and then on Tuesday we'll open a third. 15 box case of leaf metal draft football so that is what the days ahead look like here's the 411 for tonight we have one free shipping break that's our autograph baseballs those will be on the way to you no later than thursday a week from today now most of the time that stuff goes sooner but free shipping stuff always projected out basically to say no later than a week after the fact also if you are in that break the preferred players autograph baseball and your team is not pulled. You are still entitled to a consolation trading card. It can be from any year in any series. I do keep track of it for rolling 90 days. Usually, because it's a free shipping break, I would just wait and send that out with your next package when you have something heading your way. And uh, if you don't want to wait for that, you think, I want that consolation card right away, send me a message and let me know. I will gladly take care of that for you. Our paid shipping breaks tonight, that's Court Kings and AAF Football. Um, that stuff I'm expecting to be on the way to you probably Monday. I doubt that I can get it out to you ahead of that, and it shouldn't be any later than that unless something super unexpected happens. So look for that to go out Monday. Of course, if I could possibly get it to you sooner, I would, but uh, the way it's looking right now, I think Monday is going to be the case. I also think all teams will probably pull cards in both of those breaks, but if you should happen to find yourself not pulling a single card, not even a base card, in one of the paid shipping breaks, uh, just know your consolation cards will go out with the rest of the break. All right, so first up tonight, three boxes of 2019 Onyx Preferred Players Autograph Baseballs. It's an inner case break. It is break number 13. And, of course, we have four teams that don't have hits in this product, so they were not listed for sale. That would be the Cubs, the Tigers, the Marlins, and the Pirates. Everything else you will see a username across uh, for our winning bidders across from the team name of each. Now, of course, uh, a new spreadsheet is going to go up before the start of every break, so if you're not in this particular break, hey, don't worry. You're going to get a chance to see your name up in light shortly. Last but not least, yes, I know the background went out of focus right there. Don't worry. Don't adjust anything. We're going to be able to see everything we need to see with no problem. In fact, we should be able to see it better, right? Yeah, up even closer. That's why I like to set the focus manually. Hi, Lee. How are you tonight? 
And Echo's here. Echo says he really needs a Mets ball. He sent a message earlier and said he's specifically still trying to hit that uh, Peter Alonso autograph ball. So we're going to try really hard to find that tonight for Echo. And we had a couple of mojo requests for some of the other breaks uh, tonight as well. When we get farther along, I know we have one for Court Kings in particular and a couple of other mojo requests we're going to hope to be able to uh, find for you for you tonight. We'll do our best anyway. So the way I do these, it's going to tell us in this paperwork exactly who assigned this ball. But I kind of like to look at it first and just see if I can figure it out. Most of the time, I'm not even remotely close. However, the last break, I got all three. I was very proud. <laughs> the odds of that happening again are astronomically low. Okay, well, um, we know at least it's a Cardinals uh, baseball because he's got Go Cards written on it. And it's, yeah, I don't know whose signature that is. It is JSA authenticated there, Onyx authenticated. So we've got dual... Uh, authentications on this one and there is your JSA certificate you notice it's a little bent up and it doesn't fit in the box right with you know round ball and whatnot onyx authentication and this tells us who it is Sam and I'm not gonna know how to pronounce that Tua Tua Valala <laughs> oh I'm sure that's so terribly wrong <laughs> anyway um, he signed it, Go Cardinal, so I do believe that means he's going to be a Cardinal, but you know I'm a geek, so let me just look here on our Onyx, uh, on our little Onyx checklist and make sure that that all matches up. i got to find the guy on here. Where are you on here, buddy? I don't even see him on here. Who did I say he was again? Hang on. <laughs> Sam. Sam is his first name. Okay. There he is. Yeah, but he's on the checklist of St. Louis, so it's all correct, but you know I'm a little nerdy that way. I always like to verify it. And of course, for your all's purposes, there is, uh, that checklist is available on the listing description. Well, Stang Lover, I wasn't too far off. He's phonetically spelled it. Tui Valala. I wasn't too terribly far off, now was I? As far as my guesses go, which are usually quite hideous, I, I wasn't too far uh, out of the range there. All right, here's uh, that I don't know either. Don't know that one either. But it's PSA DNA authenticated and Onyx authenticated. There's your PSA DNA card to go with it, your Onyx card to go with it. And it is a walker. Tawan, Tawan Walker is uh, our second out. I think he's a Diamondback, but let's double check that. Sometimes I have one in my head and it's wrong. Yeah, he is a Diamondback. So, so far we are Cardinals and Diamondbacks. Oh, Stang Lover says you know how to pronounce his name because he's a, you have a bunch of his cards. He is from the Mariners, so I got gotcha. you. Yeah, in this instance, though, of course, we go by the Onyx checklist since they do have a handy little official checklist for us. So, um, Victor Robles, right? Yeah, I'm thinking. And it is Onyx authenticated right there. Let's see if we're on the money. There's your Onyx card that goes with it. And it is indeed a Victor for the Nationals. Okay, so Cardinals... Diamondbacks and Nationals are our three baseballs tonight. We have a couple more. Why does that not want to go in there? We have a couple more cases coming along for this. Not many more, but there's a couple more of these uh, three box cases that we'll be breaking in the next couple of weeks. And then we've got some other stuff to open, some non-Onyx things. That, of course, is your Diamondbacks. We've got some TriStar autograph baseballs that I'm thinking about maybe opening by the half case. What do you all think about that? Might be fun, right? And then last but not least was Robley's for the Nationals. All right, so let's get that all labeled up. 
Let me get a minute to set these aside and then we're going to move right on along. Okay, let's get the spreadsheet info back up here. Some of you have seen it. Some people have probably wandered in since then that maybe haven't seen it. So let's take a quick look. If you're one of the folks who did not see this a moment ago, please review the information there. It does give you lots of good info about when you can expect your order to ship, what happens if you don't pull anything, i.e. consolation cards, and it's also the order we're breaking in. So, of course, we just finished Onyx. We're getting ready to start Court Kings, and then AAF Football will be the third break of the night. So a 16 box case of 1819 Court Kings basketball. It's full case break. It's break number five. It is the last of our Court Kings. It, of course, also ended tonight on eBay Thursday night, the 11th of April. Once again, you will find team names on the left and the winning bidder user ID across from each team there on the right hand side. And Court Kings, it sounds like it's a lot, right? Because 16 boxes, you're like, oh, I'll be here five, you know, all night. You really won't. If you're waiting for AAF, listen, you're not going to have to wait too terribly long because this particular case, uh, these boxes are one pack per box. So the whole case, you know, I don't know, maybe 30, 40 minutes, something like that, will probably be uh, finished up with the entire 16 box case and the recap and... And anything else we have to do probably will be finished up in about that amount of time. So if you're waiting on AAF, don't wander too terribly far off. Like, go walk the dog, but don't go to a movie. You know, that's all I'm saying. Andrew's here. Hi, Andrew. I'm sure you see we are in Court Kings right now. So I think you've got probably the the uh, most up-to-date info on that. Stangler, you got a bunch of autographs for him uh, when he was still a St. Louis Cardinal and you saw him at events. Oh, that's cool. Lee, you got one of the baseballs? Fantastic. I'm glad to hear that. It's always more fun when you get the hits, right? <laughs> for sure. For sure. So, Court Kings, we are looking for two uh, autograph hits per box. And there's all kinds of inserts and numbered things and whatnot. We'll go over those as we go along, kind of kind of get you filled in on all of that. I do like to get everything out first. So, I'm going to open all the boxes, get them off the table, out of the way have just our packs out before we actually start looking at the cards. Kirk is here. Hi, Kirk. How are things in your part of the world, Kirk? Stanglover needs the Pistons and the Pacers, and he particularly wants a little Reggie Miller for the Pacers. So, okay, I can try that. We'll, get, we'll see if we can't make that work. I know uh, in email I had a specific mojo request for Donovan Mitchell and the Jazz, so we know we've got to try to get that fired up. And uh, Kirk needs the Lakers and the Rockets and the Suns. Poor Kirk, I can't believe you're still having snow, man. That is so awful. <laughs> I mean, we talked about that last night. I feel bad for you because you know what? It is 80 here today. Yeah, it was beautiful. I had to run a few errands uh, late in the day, and it was still so nice out. I had the sunroof open and the windows down. I was so happy. Of course, that's all about to change for me, too. I think it's supposed to drop around 30 degrees overnight, so tomorrow will be 50s and, like, windy, rainy, yucky. But, you know, springtime. And still, Kirk is, is, you know, suffering under, what did you say you got? Five inches of snow yesterday or something? So, I guess I can't really complain too much about my 30 degree temperature drop. But it did spoil me so much today. I, I never really look forward to winter very much. 
I'm uh, definitely a warm weather type person. I like to go around with the sunroof open and the windows down. And I do not like going around uh, in parkas freezing all the time. So <laughs> I'm always really glad when spring and summer finally appear. Oh, dang, Gina, you got two inches of snow on Tuesday? Dang, man, that is terrible. That is not cool at all. You're in Vermont, is that right, Gina? Or am I wrong about that? I want to say you're in Vermont. You guys know my memory is not what it should be. But I always try to associate i'll tell you how i try to remember gina as i try to remember that uh you know gina is nice and sweet like honey which comes from vermont <laughs> that's how i try to remember it and i'm guessing i'm probably wrong anyway she's probably like no i'm not even close to vermont <laughs> but hey i try i try to do word association things in my head to help me remember that's you know you gotta give me credit for trying Okay, here we go. Ready to start on some Court Kings. And I'm going to pull our parallels up to the top. So here's, the, here's kind of a brief rundown. All the portraits are numbered. If the writing up there that says portraits is red, it's going to be numbered to 99. If that writing up there that says portraits is gold, it will be numbered to 199. Basically, any time you see red writing, it's to 99. If you see gold, uh, other than portraits, it's not numbered. If you see blue, it's to 25. This is a level 2 Mitchell Robinson. This is what a level 1 looks like, also Mitchell Robinson. And those, of course, are just base. A Renaissance Men insert is not numbered. This Dwayne Wade portrait's numbered to 199. A Larry Bird autograph to 49. Boston Celtics off to a nice start. And that's hard signed too, isn't it? Oh yeah, that is hard signed, kids. That's not a sticker or anything. Mr. Larry Bird signed it to 49. The Boston Celtics. Here come the Mavericks. Derek Harper to 99 on that one. So, all right, that's kind of how these boxes are going to roll. They're going to look very similar to that the whole way through. Oh, Gina says I was right. She is Vermont. See? Oh, my little my little memory trick actually worked. I'm kind of proud about that, I have to tell you. <laughs> I am. That is how I have to do it, though. If I want to remember something like that, I have to associate it with something to help help jog my memory. <laughs> Gina, poor Gina. She says she's the one that gets all the consolation cards. We're, we got to change that. We got to make sure you start getting some hits. Andrew, that was your Larry Bird. Well, congrats, my friend. That was nice. Renaissance Men, you'll notice it's written in red, so it's going to be numbered to 99. CJ McCollum and the Blazers. A Portraits to 99, Miles Turner and the Pacers. And then this is just a points in the paint insert uh oh but it was written in blue wasn't it yeah oh see almost snuck by me number to 25 for dwight howard and the wizards because that writing is blue over there mm, very fancy this is level one troy brown jr there's a level three deandre ayton for the suns uh jerome robinson level one there is a luca level three for the Mavericks, a level two Mo Wagner Lakers, and a level three Mitchell Robinson for the Knicks. All right, base card time. Rodney Hood, Chris Middleton, and Gallinari. There's a points in the paint, but it's not numbered for Shaq. A DeAndre Ayton Emerging Artist, but it's also not numbered. If it had been numbered, Emerging Artist would be written in red rather than gold. Kyrie Thomas and the Detroit Pistons, numbered to 199. Behind that is Enos Cantor for the Knicks to 149. 
Oh, you were outbid on the Celtics. Oh, that's painful, isn't it? You know what? I always hate that. If I get outbid on something and then I watch the break and something good happens, it does. Oh, it's painful. I know. I'm sorry about that. Warriors, Knicks, and Lakers on our base. And then there's a DeAndre Ayton points in the paint. Here's a portrait to 199 uh, for the Grizzlies. Our hits, the Phoenix Suns are going to have D'Anthony Melton autograph. Your number one overall draft pick happens to be numbered to 25, no less. Hey, how about that? I, De, that's D'Anthony Melton. I said DeAndre Ayton. It's not DeAndre Ayton. It's D'Anthony Melton. I was getting all excited. I saw the D and <laughs> the A in D'Anthony. Let's back that up. Not at all your number one overall draft pick. Not even remotely that. But... Um, it is the Phoenix Suns to 25. It's just not exactly who you wanted. Kenny Anderson, one of one for the Brooklyn Nets. How about that? Yeah, we haven't pulled a one of one out of here yet. Now we have one of one Nets. Nice, Kenny Anderson. Uh, base cards are Hawks, Heat, Jazz. We have a Renaissance uh, Paul George for the Thunder. And a Renaissance Kawhi Leonard as a Raptor. Here come our autographs. It is Jacob Evans, numbered to 199 for the Golden State Warriors. Next up, the Blazers. That is numbered to 99, Clifford Robinson. Yeah, Andrew, I was pretty psyched to see the one of one come out of there. We haven't, uh, that's our first one of one out of court kings this this whole season which gosh i mean here we are in case number five and our first one of one so they've been a little shy this year those one of ones in court kings so i was glad to have one show up for you guys tonight all right let's roll through this Aaron Holiday, that's going to be numbered to 25. Indiana Pacers, it's a Portraits. Numbered to 99, Tobias Harris and the Clippers. And Chris Stapps to 99 for the Knicks. A level 3, Zaire Smith for the 76ers. There's a level 1, Wendell Carter Jr. for the Bulls. And there's Alonzo Trier, level 2, Knicks. Level 2 Miles Bridges for the Hornets, a Level 3 Landry for the 76ers, and a Kevin Knox, Level 1 for the Knicks. Some base cards, Anthony Davis and our Trevor Ariza and Kevin Durant. Points in the paint, Alonzo Mourning, Emerging Artist Marvin Bagley. Saw that Hawks logo, got excited there for a second, thinking we had Trey Young. Instead, we have Amari Spellman, but at least it's numbered to 25. So that's our second uh, rookie autograph to 25 out of this case. Not too bad. Antonio McDice for the Denver Nuggets to 149. Base cards are the Magic, the Raptors, the Warriors. There's a Chris Paul Renaissance man. A Bill Walton points in the paint for the Trailblazers. Once again, I saw the team logo and got excited. I thought maybe we had Luca, But instead, for the Mavericks to 99, we have J.J. Barea. At least Mavericks aren't uh, going home empty-handed, right? Villacunas, Raptors. Was he not numbered? Do you have a number on him back there? Oh, he does. I missed it. It's up at the top. It's numbered to 149. Some base cards here for Nola and the Nuggets and the Warriors. A Renaissance man, Jason Tatum for the Celtics. That's a uh, Kyrie Irving to 199 portraits for the Celtics. Michael Porter Jr. to 199 Nuggets. Gina, you said you were bidding on the Nets because you wanted that an Anderson auto and you stopped because of what are the odds? <laughs> oh, well, 
Ah, uh, yeah, that mm, the odds of hitting Kenny Anderson one of one were probably pretty high, but yet I know painful. I know. I'm so sorry, man. <laughs> Number to ninety nine. It's Jose Calderon for the Pistons. But see, it's when you have those feelings, Gina. You know, like uh, Jay Allen was in here the other night, and he had uh, some feelings about some teams, and he absolutely, like, crushed it. The teams, he had three teams, and he just kind of thought, it's you know, these teams are going to hit tonight. He was entirely correct. He did extremely well. So sometimes it does work that way. You get that little, you know, psychic friends network urge. And sometimes you've got to just follow it. <laughs> if you're not of a certain age, you're not going to probably get that reference. That is Charles Barkley to 25 for the 76ers with points in the paint. To 99, Joe Harrison, the Nets, and Russell Westbrook, the Thunder, numbered to 25. All right, there's Landry again, level three for the Sixers, a level two Kevin Knox for the Knicks, and a level two Troy Brown Jr. for the Wizards. Level two Chandler Hutchison for the Bulls. There's level one Marvin Bagley for the Kings, and a uh, level one Zaire Smith for the Sixers. Heard the Kings fired their coach, is that right? I didn't. I was out running errands, so I really did not get a chance to deep dive into anything but somebody mentioned that to me warriors mavericks knicks renaissance man the big man carl anthony towns for the t-wolves portraits miles bridges to 199 for the hornets alonzo trier to 199 for the knicks nice little rookie hit there the pistons are hitting a lot tonight it seems like it's to 149 with Kelly. Yeah, we're just going to leave it at Kelly. It looks like Tripucka, but it's probably not that. <laughs> it's probably not even close to that. Celtics, Pelicans, Nuggets, Renaissance Man, Clay Thompson. And here is the elusive level four. And it happens to be for one Mitchell Robinson and the Knicks. Generally speaking, we find one of these per case, or sometimes we don't even find one, and we instead get the even more rare hit that has the French writing. Jamal Wilkes to 149 for the Lakers. Los Angeles making some noise there, finally. Herb Williams for the Pacers. Stang Lovers got this one headed his way. It is numbered to 99. And there's Carl Anthony Towns, Tobias Harris, Eric Bledsoe, Renaissance Man, DeMar DeRozan, and the Grizzlies with the portraits to 199 of Mark Gasol. Here come the Lakers again with Mo Wagner to 199. <laughs> I just read Gina's comment. She said they fired uh, the coach. Why? What is wrong with that sleeve? They fired the coach of the Kings because he won too much. <laughs> well, certainly the Kings have had their challenges over the years. But didn't they just extend uh, Divic? Didn't they? I think they did. They extended him and fired the coach. This is to 149 T-Wolves Isaiah Ryder. Stang Lover, you had a feeling about Reggie Miller. Okay. All right. Well, let's see then if you're correct as well. Because uh, Jay Allen last uh, the other night, I mean, he had three teams. And all three of them actually hit really quite well. So sometimes it works out. You never know. Hi, Patrick. I have not seen any Shea Gilgis Alexander autographs yet tonight. No, we have not yet. Points in the paint. Dwight Howard to 99 for the Wizards. Aaron Holiday to 99. Emerging Artists. And this is number 25 for the Grizzlies with Watanabe. 
We have a level three Mo Wagner Lakers, level three Dante DiVincenzo Bucks, and another three for Chandler Hutchison and the Bulls. Here come a bunch of level twos. Okoji, T-Wolves, Jalen Brunson, Mavericks, and Aaron Holiday for the Pacers. Base, Mavericks, Clippers, Rockets, DeMar DeRozan, Renaissance, man, man, men, whatever. And Jordan Clarkson to 199 for the Cavaliers with a portrait. We've got a redemption there, I know. We're going to get back to it in a minute. Jalen Brown and the Celtics. That is the Bulls and the Grizzlies. Dwight Howard, Renaissance Man, Wizards. A DeMar DeRozan portrait to 199 Then CJ McCollum, Vucevic, Boogie Cousins, Miles Bridges, Emerging Artists, and an Aurora. These don't come out very often, actually. As a matter of fact, hardly ever. And that is one DeAndre Ayton. Now I can officially say there's your number one overall draft pick coming out for the Phoenix Suns. All right, nice to see that. We may as well start with the best one that I see up here, which is Trey Young to 199. Nice little hard signed autograph there for the Atlanta Hawks. The Memphis Grizzlies have Javon Carter to 99. Then we have another uh, hit coming for the Pacers to 149. This is George McGinnis. So, Stang Lover, you've had some Pacers, just not Reggie Miller quite yet. Kevin Dooling to 99 for the Clippers. Redemption, you know the deal, stays face down right there. We'll flip it at the very end of the break, and then we'll also verify it at the Panini website. Number to 149, that is Channing Fry for the Cavaliers. Gina, you said that uh, that Blade also fired the assistant GM. Uh, and according to the offensive stats, the Kings had the biggest turnaround up 15 points a game. Yeah, I know. They really had started to look like they were headed in the right direction. I was a little perplexed, but I guess not entirely surprised because, you know, they had that dust up earlier in the year about wanting Bagley to play more. And if he didn't, you know, they were going to potentially fire, uh, fire Dave then and blah, blah, blah. So I guess I'm not entirely surprised. But at the same time, it is tough, you know, when you're raising the level of the program and they still sack you. That is Nowitzki to 99 for the Mavericks. Renaissance man Tony Parker to 99. Hornets. LeBron James and the Lakers to 99. Level 2 Bagley Kings. Level 3 Trey Young Hawks. A level two Aaron Holiday for the Pacers. Level one Shamit for the 76ers. Level three Colin Sexton for the Cavs. And a level one Aaron Holiday for the Pacers. Seems like we've had a lot of Aaron Holiday, doesn't it? Kind of, a little bit. Nets, Lakers, Knicks. Renaissance Andrew Wiggins for the T-Wolves. Points in the paint Carl Anthony Towns for the T-Wolves. Autograph number to 199. It's Jared Vanderbilt for the Denver Nuggets. Um, Stang Lover, no. Leaf Metal Draft is uh, football is due tomorrow. That stuff never comes uh, early. It always comes the day of release. Not just that one, any of them. We're always only supposed to get them day of release. To 149, Seattle Supersonics. Now, guys uh, and gals, the former Seattle Supersonics are the current uh, Oklahoma City Thunder. So, cards always stay with their franchises. So, that Supersonics card, accordingly, goes to the Thunder. Bulls, Jazz, Suns, points in the paint, Tim Duncan. 
emerging artist Anthony Simons for the Trailblazers. We have a Troy Brown Jr. to 99 for the Washington Wizards. Then for the Denver Nuggets, it's Marcus Camby. Hey, to 99. Yeah, you guys know I like some of that throwback ink. Portland Trailblazers, the Magic, the Bucks, points in the paint, Bill Walton for the Blazers, Kuzma, emerging artist, another Mo Wagner, I say another, I think we hit a first one, this one is numbered to 99 for the Lakers, and the Magic, Nick Anderson to 149, but before we recap we do have you got it a redemption to take a look at so let me set our base cards on down the way here to get them get them out of the line of fire we'll flip this over find out what it says and then wander over to the panini website pull it up on there and find out what it's numbered to and all that it's for the kings it is marvin bagley heir apparent now I'm going, going to assume, because there's no uh, color after it, you know, it doesn't say ruby, sapphire, etc. I don't know if that will be numbered or not. I'm kind of thinking maybe not, but eh, you never know. So that's what we're going to find out. We're going to hop right over here. Whoops, I have that set up from... Forgot to change that over, didn't I? I know, right? Not to worry, it doesn't take long. All right, heir apparent is what I need to find. Mr. Marvin Bagley is card number four, and it is going to be numbered. It is numbered to 199, as you see there on the screen. So now I've got that labeled up, and let me switch your view back to me, and we're ready to go. To recap, I mean, to recap. The Aurora insert, fairly rare. DeAndre Ayton for the Phoenix Suns. That's either the first or second that we pulled out of five cases. Uh, they don't come out very often. A level four Mitchell Robinson for the Knicks. Those come out usually one per case. Occasionally it gets replaced by one of the French ones instead, and then you don't get the level four. A King's Redemption, Marvin Bagley to 199. Nick Anderson for the Magic, Mo Wagner and the Lakers, Marcus Camby Nuggets, Troy Brown Jr. for the Wizards, the Seattle Supersonics once again is the current Oklahoma City Thunder, that's where that goes, that is Xavier McDaniel, Jared Vanderbilt Nuggets, Channing Fry Cavaliers, Kevin Dool Keon Dooling for uh, the Clippers, George McGinnis, Pacers, Javon Carter, Grizzlies, Trey Young, Atlanta Hawks. And that is Isaiah Ryder for the T-Wolves. Mo Wagner for the Lakers, the second one of those. That is Herb Williams to 99 for the Pacers. Jamal Wilkes and the Lakers. Kelly Trapucka for the Pistons. Alonzo Trier, Knicks. The Pistons with Jose Calderon to 99. Michael Porter Jr. to 199 for the Denver Nuggets. The Raptors have Villa Kunas and JJ Barea to 99 for the Mavericks. Antonio McDice, Nuggets to 149. Amari Spellman for the Hawks. That one is numbered to 25. Clifford Robinson, Portland Trailblazers to 99. Jacob Evans, Golden State Warriors. Kenny Anderson for the Nets. That is a one of one, kids. Like, you can't really tell it from the front, right? Like, what do you see that screams one of one? Not much. But on the back, ah, oh, there it is. Handsome one of one down there in that lower left-hand corner. DeAnthony Melton for the Phoenix Suns, Enos Cantor and the Knicks, Kyrie Thomas for the Pistons, there's Derek Harper, also a Maverick, and we got things started tonight with this beautiful card 
That is a hard signed Larry Bird for the Celtics, number to 49. Woohoo! All right, so kids, uh, that has Court Kings all wrapped up for tonight. And Gina has a question about the level four. Does it have a similar value of the downtown insert, which is also a case hit? Um, I guess it, like anything else, it would depend on the player. But I think downtown probably has a little, a little more desirability than maybe the level four. But if the one that has the French writing, I can't pronounce the French words that are on it. We only pulled one of those out of all five cases. It was Kobe Bryant, and it came out of the last case that we did. Those, I expect, would probably be more on par with the downtown. Actually, they might be a little higher than the, than the downtown. But again, it depends on the player. And also, keep in mind, I don't always look up all those values for every single player. I just kind of do a, a little glance through, you know, spot check it, if you will. So if somebody else that pays more attention to that wants to weigh in, that would be awesome. Stang Lover sometimes has a pretty good grip on that sort of thing because he resells a lot. All right. For those of you who might have missed it earlier, here's what you need to know. Court Kings that we just finished, AAF football that we're about to start, should be on the way to you approximately Monday. As always, if I can get it out sooner, I will. If something went horribly wrong for my week or my weekend, it could slide to Tuesday, but I'm anticipating Monday is your most likely shipping date. Preferred players autograph baseballs, that was a free shipping break. Therefore, it's projected to go out no later than Thursday a week from today. Most often it goes sooner, but should be no later than Thursday the 18th. If you got skunked in Court Kings, uh, you won't get skunked in AAF. But in Court Kings, if you happen to have not pulled a single card, which is unlikely, but possible, I guess, in theory, uh, no base cards or whatever, your consolation cards would ship with the rest of the break because it's a paid break. If you were in the autograph baseball break and your team was not the team pulled and you got skunked, typically I would hang on to your consolation card until your next package shipped. Then I would send any that you're due all together at once. If you don't want to wait for that, though, all you need to do, hit me up, send me a message on eBay, let me know. I will gladly take care of that for you. So this is going to be a half case of 2019 Alliance of American Football, AAF football. And um, there were only eight teams in AAF football. <laughs> and Stanglover has, like, most of them. So Stanglover is going to be getting a bunch of cards. And then uh, we have Alteria there had a couple of teams. Uh, Logic Boys got one. Tim York's got one. So, you know, there's four of you. Uh, probably they'll still be hanging around. Everybody else is like, eh, I'm out of here. But anyway, we have got this to open. So let me get the case up here. And we will get started. Basically, I'm not going to, you know, normally I, um, I write on these boxes with a marker and then we, we use random to determine which ones we open now and which ones we open the next time. I'm not going to write on these with a marker because, um, I may just sell the other half of the case outright. As you probably know, I lost a bunch of money on this first half of the case. And I could have sold it as a sealed case and been pretty close to break even. So that's probably what I should have done. But I didn't because I kind of wanted to break it and see what was in it. But anyway, so this will basically be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That simple. But I'm just not going to write on them, you know, with marker like I usually do when we're using random to determine our boxes because if I were to uh, sell them to somebody they probably don't want me writing on it in marker that's my thought
All right, 1 through 12 typed in. I'm going to hit random one single time for six numbers that come up. We'll open the corresponding six boxes. All right, so it gives us box 2, 11, 3, 12, 1, and 4. So that's, oh, that's how, oh, that's so handy. 1, 2, 3, 4, 11, and 12. Oh, I like that. That's easy. 1, 2, 3, 4, 11, and 12. All right, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I can take out uh, 5 and 6. Hang on a minute. we got to extract 5 and 6 without hopefully turning anything over. Good Lord, last night I knocked the camera over twice. Twice. One time I hit the tripod, I think. A second time I hit the cord, which pulled the tripod and the camera over. I know, it was hot mess. Let me get these first six, or these remaining six, back in their case, and then we'll get busy. All right. Stang Lover says alcohol will take the marker off. <laughs> well, that's good to know. <laughs> I thought it was maybe easier just not to write on them, though, still. But that is good to know, for real, if you ever have to get it off, that alcohol will get Sharpie off, it sounds like. Sharpie marker, according to, to Stang Lover, who I trust. So I believe that will be the case. Gina, I was, I'm with you. I was hoping uh, that they would make it to... Yeah, I did. And Stang Lover, I, you know what? Even if they hadn't dissolved the league, I don't know that the prices would have changed much on this product. It's just new products. You know how it goes. It's often really hard for them to get a foothold. But I kind of think, I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. But some of these guys have already signed deals with the NFL. Probably some others will somewhere along the way. And so these, you know, you never know. I mean, their rookie cards technically could end up coming out of AAF, really. You never know where the value is going to be. So I'm kind of okay with it. In fact, I considered even just keeping it as a sealed case and doing nothing with it and setting on it to see what happened. And then I decided, oh, I've got too much stuff I've kept. I need to, I need to not do that. So... <laughs> Staying lover says when he said alcohol, he didn't mean tequila. <laughs> I know what you meant, man. I know what you meant. Straight up rubbing alcohol. So we are apparently looking for three autographs per box. That's what the info says here on the top of this box. And um, that's about all I know. <laughs> so... Your guess is as good as mine as to what else we may find. I don't know if there's numbered things or inserts or other stuff or not. But anyway, we've got these. And kind of the other reason I wanted to get it is because I love Topps football and I had missed Topps football. And so I wanted it kind of even knowing that there was a chance that, that uh, they might not maintain the league. I still thought I got to have a little of it. So, yeah, I'm going to lose several hundred dollars, but I'm not necessarily sad about it. I think it's kind of fun anyway. So, I guess those are not numbered. I was checking that little future stars there because it looked different, but it was not numbered. So, I think we can probably assume that they will not be numbered going forward. But, yeah, I do miss Tops football. So I was a little a little nostalgic for it. Now that also that maybe is numbered. Oh, it is. That one's numbered to 50. Okay. We'll figure it out as we go along. So did everyone see that Johnny Manziel now wants to be called John Manziel, right? <laughs> no Johnny now, he's just John. Because that, you see, is going to revive his whole career. Just dropping that extra NY. <laughs> I know, I, I shouldn't say that. I should not say that. Okay, this is uh, for the Arizona Hotshots. It's John Walford, quarterback. 
autograph number one. Uno out of this box, we should be finding uh, in total three of them. Okay. Stang Lover, are you saying you're specifically looking for numbered parallels and future stars inserts? Or are you just commenting that that is what we have found so far? This one, a little red parallel here, is numbered to 99. Watch them, maybe? Something like that. And he is... For who? <laughs> Who's his team? Where the heck does it say his team on here? I have no idea. Where does it say the team? Well, anyway, it's the team with the little pickaxe. So um, that I think that's the Hot Shots, right? Pickaxe is the Arizona Hot Shots, I think. Yeah, I think so. Oh, you're saying that on the checklist, that's the other thing it said we should be looking for. The the numbered, uh, the numbered, and uh, the numbered parallel, blah, 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 the numbered parallels in the future stars insert. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Well, so far we found at least one of each, so we're definitely on the right track. It's good when a plan comes together. And now if one of these guys go, jumps to the NFL and becomes like the next uh, Tom Brady or something, you guys will have been in on the ground floor. How about that? I also thought about keeping the other half of the pack and just opening it. <laughs> I mean the other half of the case. I know, I go through all these phases of, do I want to open a bunch of stuff? And usually the answer is, yes, I do want to open it. For myself, I mean. And sometimes I'm able to contain myself and not do it. And other times I just sit down and rip right into it. So you never know. Sang Lover says, look at the front of the box. All the logos are on there. <laughs> well, that is a valid point. A valid point, my friend. I do not uh, disagree with you on that. There's another Future Stars, Folston. He's for the Legends. And off we go. Into the wild blue yonder. And there's a future stars uh, for for Kelly. A little quarterback uh, happening there for the San Diego Fleet. I believe that was. Oh, my man Heinz Ward! Woohoo! You know I love me some Heinz Ward. So we still have two more autographs that should be hanging around in here somewhere that Ebersol there was stuck behind. Oh, come on now. Ebersol was stuck behind the other cards, but the point of the matter is he needs to come out of there. He's one of the uh, founders of the league, so he doesn't have a team affiliation, so he needs to set up there. And he'll end up going to somebody by way of random. Second out, we have Zach Sanchez for the Commanders. Still one autograph hiding in here somewhere in box number one or two or whatever box we're in. What box are we in? One. There it is. It's for the Express with Rajon or Rajon Neal. 
You do feel bad for these guys, though, you know? I mean, they're they're thinking they, they had a contract through a, a certain period of time, and then... Then, ah, oh, Troy Polamalu. Oh, was Troy affiliated with a team, or was he another just, like, investor-type guy? He's head of player relations, so he's got to go up here, too, with Mr. Eversall. Basically, all of those uh, folks who are in here that are not associated with a specific team but are league officials, for lack of a better term, will all be given out using random.org. We'll just do that at the end of the break. There are all those logos Stanglover was reminding me about. So, Legends, Iron, Commanders, Hotshots, Apollos, Express, The Fleet, and The Stallions. But you never know. I mean, AAF football may still come back. They actually had a pretty good product on the field. I don't, uh, I don't really kind of know why their financing was so out of line that they didn't quite get their first season completed. But of course, they're supposed to be coming, coming not these guys, but another group is still going to bring us XFL football again in a year or so, year or two, maybe. I think there's a place for a league like this, kind of a, their intent was to be somewhat of a developmental league, and I definitely think there's a place for it. They just didn't quite have it all worked out, I guess, for this one. There is an autograph, and it's hard to see it, but it's, you know, kind of right there. It's just initials, but anyway, it's uh, Francis Awasu, Awasu, something like that, for the fleet. I think the Steelers actually signed... Uh, Oh, he's a coach. Signed someone, uh, uh, maybe a couple of people out of the AAF already. I was hoping Austin McGinnis would get an NFL job. He's a kicker. He was the kicker here for my University of Kentucky Wildcats. And he was in the AAF. He was an excellent kicker in college. And I don't really... I think he had some good and maybe one bad game in the AAF. But I guess no one's picked him up. Ah, number 299. Terrence McGee. For the Express. Poor Christian Hackenberg, you know, he was just as bad in the AAF as he was in the NFL. <laughs> it's kind of sad, really, right? Future stars for the Arizona Hot Shots with uh, Trevor Knight. So I'm thinking about trading cars. And man, I had no idea 
There has been a lot of stuff that has changed since the last time that I bought a vehicle. For instance, did you know that some of them don't even have a gear shift anymore? There's just a button that you push, literally a button for drive, park, whatever. There's nothing that you shift or move. You just push a button. To me, that's a little freaky. Doran Grant for the legends. Because, you know, I mean, I kind of drive with my arm on the armrest and my hand a lot. Not always, but a lot of times I will rest my hand up there on the, on the gear shift knob or whatever you want to call it. And, yeah, it's gone, like totally gone. <laughs> Future Stars Howard for the legends. I had no idea that that was a thing. And then I started thinking, like, what happens? Because they're in a weird sort of place, too. Uh, and then I'm thinking, what if you're just driving down the road and let's say you're reaching over to do navigation, which I know you're not supposed to do when you're moving, but whatever. <laughs> or you're doing, uh, you know, the radio or something. There's Jennings uh, for the Stallions. And what if you accidentally hit one of those buttons? You know, what if you're cruising down the highway at 65 miles an hour and you accidentally hit the button that says park? <laughs> like, what's going to happen there? I don't know. It's so, so unusual. I think I'm going to have a hard time adjusting. I feel like it's a Jetsons car. Um, although I haven't traded for it yet. Anyway, but this is numbered to 50. And it is uh, for, the, for the iron and it is uh, ben Benequez Brown. That little, I stacked him with the autographs. Needs to be stacked with the numbered cards. But anyway. So I'm not sure I'm a fan of that, by the way. The, you know, we've all gotten used to the push button start and all the other little innovations, etc., etc., etc. But not having a gear shift, that's kind of crazy right i think so stribbling future stars for the express an autograph is coming up here it is Irvin phillips for the legends and ah there it is for the fleet. That was the very last card laying up there on the mat, man. That thing was totally hanging out waiting with Jaquan Gardner. Did we already look at these? I think maybe we did, but to be on the safe side, we'll... Oh, I guess we hadn't, because look there. Uh -huh. Yeah, I guess we hadn't. That's why we got to be on the safe side, isn't it? To 25, that is Scott Ornoff or something kind of close to that uh apollos orlando apollos team for the last one all right this is box number three that i'm taking out right now so we've opened two. This is the third of six. Stanglover says over 40 players uh, from AAF have signed with NFL teams. The Steelers have six. I knew the Steelers had a couple. I didn't know they had as many as six, but I knew they had a couple. So that's not too bad. I mean, you know, so there may be some, you don't know, of course, until we see if these guys make the team, make the cut, et cetera, et cetera. But there is definitely the potential, if any of these guys break out and do well, to have a little money on your side with the what would be the earliest possible rookie card for them.
All right. DeMarcus Ayers. Didn't we have DeMarcus Ayers on our team to begin with, like several years ago? Or am I thinking of a different Ayers that we had that didn't didn't stick a few years back? I could have sworn it was a DeMarcus Ayers, but maybe not. Of course, you never know. Sometimes uh, a few years uh, off or away or in a different environment, you might come back a better player, depending on what they've done in those couple years. I.e., if they've stayed in shape and practiced and gotten better and etc. Zach Mettenberger, he's a former NFLer. Titan, I think he used to be. It's numbered to 99 for the Express. There's a McKay Future Stars. Which was a commander, by the way, I think. That last future star. I don't think I said that, but I'm pretty sure that logo was for the commanders. <laughs> well, maybe it wasn't him. Am I wrong? Was it not him staying over? I really could have sworn that. I mean, I really thought that it was. But maybe it was just a similar name, and I'm not thinking properly about it. But I really thought DeMarcus Ayers was with the Steelers like a couple years ago, two, three years ago. Folston to 25 future stars for the legends. It was him. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I thought it was, but I wasn't 100% sure. And 2016. Yeah. So, all right. A couple years back, I was, I was kind of on my mark there. And so now they've picked him up again. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens to him the next time. <laughs> I'm sure I still have some of his autographed rookie cards around. Trevor Knight, Hot Shots. I didn't even realize that Marcus Ayers was in AAF, honestly. So, Stanglover, are you pretty excited about tomorrow night? You got two products that I think you're going to like a lot tomorrow in Leaf Metal Draft Football, and then, of course, Honors Football. So are you probably, uh, are you, are you thinking it's going to be fun tomorrow or are you dreading it going, oh my God, it's going to be expensive tomorrow. <laughs> I really don't know what to expect on uh, Leaf Metal Draft because of it coming out the same day as Honors. Of course, it's probably somewhat different audiences, the two products, but, but nonetheless, we're going to break them both tomorrow night, so. You see, you went out and sold a couple of organs today. <laughs> well, that's one way to prepare, I guess. <laughs> Sam Mobley uh, for the Stallions. And what the what? Look at his autograph. Look at that. Now, who would do that? You got this whole big space to use, and you sign this little bitty tiny autograph way over there to the left. Like, why wouldn't he put it in the middle, in a white space? Like, it, almost anywhere else would be better than where he signed it. That's super, super weird. But anyway, Sam Mobley and the Stallions, you have an autograph, but dang, I'm not a fan of the way that guy signed it. Commanders, Dustin Vaughn. There are definitely some people who sign things in weird ways. We've talked about that plenty before. Tobias Palmer to 25. I so saw where somebody, somebody got let go by the Bengals this week. Was it Mark Walton? He used to sign like really big. 
but I'm not sure if it was him or not, but someone got sacked by the Bengals. I think it was early this week uh, after being arrested for the third time this year. He got arrested down in Miami, and it was one of the younger guys, maybe maybe Mark Walton, but I wouldn't absolutely swear to it that it was him. The Bengals have so much work to do. Like, how how can they afford to cut anybody? <laughs> they've they've got to start pretty much from scratch. Future stars Kelly. All right, halfway point. Three boxes down, three boxes to go. Well, Perfect got cut a while back. Perfect, um, but they didn't they trade him, Vontez? He, he, well, and he, I'm sure, has been arrested like a bunch. <laughs> well, maybe he hasn't been, but he's been in trouble a lot. He's been fined and suspended uh, at like a zillion and one times. I don't know if he's been arrested or not, but they got rid of him a while back. And I think they traded him, if I'm not... Maybe they flat out cut him, but either way, that's not who I'm talking about. This is a rookie. It was Mark Walton. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, that it was him. I mean, I know these kids are young and they make a lot of money and sometimes that can lead you to questionable decision making. But man, what a, I mean, just throwing away an opportunity like playing in the NFL, just crazy. Oh, you didn't, <laughs> you didn't know he had been cut staying lover. I'm sorry. <laughs> now he's feeling all depressed. He's like, oh my God. <laughs> There's another card that's, like, not worth hardly anything now. I'm so sorry, man. I I didn't realize you you had a bunch of Mark Waltons, number one. Nor did I realize that you didn't know he had been cut. Yeah, I mean, I mean they, they didn't use him a lot. But you could see how they may have been able to use him more. But... He needed to get a little better, but you're not going to do that if you keep getting arrested. Jeff Luck for the Legends. That is number 25 for the Stallions, C.J. Smith. Stars. Oh, I about went past our autograph, didn't I? That is the fleet, and it's Cameron Kelly. <laughs> Stang Lover, you're not entirely wrong. So, Stang Lover knows that I have this theory. Uh, that I used to practice a lot when I was buying into a lot of basketball breaks myself. That sometimes, you know, you just feel like you get stuck and you just, you can't hit, right? Like your team just, is, you're not in a groove. Something's just not flowing your way. This is to 99 Kenny Bell for the Stallions. And sometimes for me that would go on for an extended period of time. Like it might be... You know, a dozen breaks, or it might be over a couple weeks, or whatever, where I would just, gosh, I just either was hitting nothing, or hitting nothing that I wanted, or whatever. And I would always kind of try to hit the reset button by buying the Nets, because it seems like that the Nets get a disproportionate amount of hits. Like, think about all the products that you see opened, and how many times there are Nets hits in them. You know, frankly, it's usually a lot, a lot of the time. And so I don't really have any particular interest in the Nets, but I would buy the Nets just to kind of reset my mojo. That's the only way I know how to explain it to you. 
And then, you know, if I got lucky and got a Nets hit, which often I did, then I would go back to my regular teams and think my luck had changed. And a lot of times it would have. So, that was always my theory in basketball. The Nets were my go-to if my mojo was out of whack. <laughs> so, Stangler and I had that conversation a long time ago. A couple years ago, probably. And so, he says that the Bengals are like the Nets for him as well. It's kind of his, if all else fails, you can get some Bengals hits. It's the reset button, sort of. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, I think there are teams like that. And for sure, the Nets were that way for me. I got a lot of Nets cards <laughs> that I never, you know, I don't know. I never sold them. I never did anything with them. But I don't collect the Nets, so they just kind of hang around. But they served their purpose anyway, which was getting me over the hump of being stuck. Alex Ross and the Fleet. Stanley Lover says he's heard it all over the last couple of years. I, uh, yeah, you probably have. That's a good point. It's to 99, Chris Davis for the iron. But how many times is that true? You know, staying level, you know it is. It works out that way a lot. It's, it's really kind of strange how many net hits there are when you think about how many... Nets players there are that someone would really want to collect versus how many times the Nets hit. I would say they hit out of proportion to the number of quote-unquote stars on their team. That's my point. And as much as anything else, it's probably just in my head, you know. It probably was, but but it did seem to work, so it's my... My my theory, and I'm sticking I'm sticking to it. <laughs> he he says why nobody else is chatting. He's starting to feel self conscious. He says I'm paraphrasing because no one else is chatting. I know everybody's surprisingly quiet. Everybody was kind of quiet uh, actually all week. Been fairly quiet for whatever reason, for the most part. Box five of six coming out of the plastic right now. But see, there's probably not all that many people here with us right now, Stang Lover, because there's only, what, four of you, three of you, or three or four of you have uh, all the teams in this because there's not very many teams in it, you know. So everybody else is kind of like... Ah, we don't care about watching AAF. <laughs> and they've, they've all wandered off to do something else. That would be my guess anyway. So staying lover... I'm assuming you drive a Mustang, right? Just given your, given the uh, handle that you use. Do you drive a newer one or an older one or what? Always wanted a 1968 Mustang convertible. That's always the car that I thought would be awesome to get and have restored. Notice I did not say restore myself because, yeah, that would not be my cup of tea. But <laughs> to find one and get one restored, I always thought would be so cool. Now that I'm kind of car shopping, pseudo car shopping, all this stuff, I start thinking about things like that. For the fleet, it is Jaquan Gardner. I think we might have pulled him earlier as well. And there's Doran Grant for the Legends. I'm pretty sure we pulled him earlier. I think we did. Ah, so you have the 1999 Cobra. Oh, that's pretty cool. You gave your 07 coupe to your son. Well, that was nice. That probably made him very happy. This is numbered to 50. It is Nick Thurman 
for the commanders. Yeah, of course, it would be hard these days to go back and even if I got a beautiful 1968 convertible and got it restored and everything, it would be so hard to go back to that, wouldn't it? Now that we're all so used to our gadgets, our backup cameras and lane watch and, you know, Bluetooth and MP3s and all that. Can you imagine going backwards? would be kind of hard on a daily anyway future stars rose be the kind of car you'd have in the garage and take it out on weekends to 99 Steven Johnson for the hot shots That is number to 10. And who is this? Mike Martz for the fleet. Your dream would be a 67 Eleanor GT 500. Well, that would be nice. But a GT500 1967 would cost you how much money? A lot, I imagine. A lot, a lot. Because you'd have to either have it buy it not the way you want it and pay to have it restored, unless you're inclined to do that yourself, or to find one in a nice kind of minty mint condition probably be fairly pricey, I would think. GT500. It's funny now when you go back and look at some of those car, des car designs from the 50s and 60s, isn't it? compared to what we have today. A Ross Future Stars. The Legends, Irvin Phillips. Oh, you'd have to sell organs and your limbs to get that one. <laughs> Well, then you wouldn't be able to drive it, man. So that seems like a terrible plan. That seems like a, a very, very bad plan. Better to just go win the lottery and buy it, right? To 99. That is brown for the iron. Future Stars, that one is Davis. The Fleet have an autograph, and that's uh, signed with our, our Francis up there, uh, Owosu. We've had him before as well, so he's a duplicate. Future Stars, Davis. Last box, last box mojo coming your way. Stanglover, you have, I think, half the teams in this, right? So I'm sure that you have had hits by now. For have you had hits for everybody at this point, or is there somebody you're still missing?
Oh, yeah, for real. You said your 99 black convertible is 320 horsepower, and the V6s of today are only 305 horsepower. Yeah, I mean, you definitely... Cars are made entirely differently than they used to be. There's no question about that. And one of the things I've learned recently um, is that a lot of the newer, i.e. 2019 stuff, it's really impossible to find much if you're looking at a not, you know, an SUV or a truck, but an actual passenger car. It's hard to find V6. Everybody's got... Uh, got the variable speed transmission and the four cylinders which i'm not really a huge fan of used to be you could still pretty easily get it as an option if you wanted to buy something new but not as much these days this is peli anew or something like that the arizona hot shots I just hadn't paid much attention. You know, I hadn't bought a car. I hadn't, you know, bought a car in a bit. The last one I bought was new, and I just decided to drive it for a while after it was paid for, you know. No need to trade it in right away. And so a lot changes in a few short years these days. Jordan Leslie Stallions. Of course, we ought to know that by looking at our trading cards. Every year you think, oh, there's not anything else they could possibly think of to do. And yeah, they'll come out with some other new product that's a zillion dollars and we all love it. <laughs> uh, Bracey Williams, Future Stars. put all these guys in uniform you know there's like half of them are in uniform and the other half or their pictures are in like sweats and stuff and I'm not talking about just coaches or league executives I'm talking about players of course Closing in on it here, kids. Of course, after we look at this last little bit, uh, before we recap, I'm going to do a random that will cover. Uh, I only laid two of them up there, but obviously there's duplicates of each of those guys. And there are probably some other league executives in here that I just didn't sort out and put aside. But basically it'll be all of the... Uh, executives that don't have a team association on their card and i'll use random.org to award those to one team shortly meanwhile who jumped who tried to jump off the ship there drew jackson tried to go crazy doesn't seem to be any worse for the wear but silly drew Future Stars, McKay. And here's our last autograph. It is for the Commanders, Duke Thomas. Um, you said Topps Chrome shows a lot of players in pregame shorts and t-shirts and stuff. Yeah, I guess they did. I didn't really think about that, but I guess, uh, I guess they did have some of that in those, in those, uh, other Topps products I wasn't really thinking about. It's just, I don't know, it's just odd to see it in here that it's like half are in uniform and then half look 
like that. <laughs> and you're like, what happened there? That's to 99, Akeem Hunt. Hunt, uh, a different hunt, Future Stars Cole Hunt. All right, there we are at the end. The end. But we do still have our recap and our and our things to do. All right, so once again, guys, uh, the random is going to be for anybody who is a team executive of some sort not associated with an individual team. So these are just examples. There are more over there. There's, you know, duplicates of Troy. There are duplicates of Charlie Eversall over there. There could even be other executives that I didn't catch going through. But Troy Palomalu, of course, had a player relations. Charlie uh, Eversall was one of the CEOs and co-founders. So basically it's any player or executive or coach or whatever you want to call them. Mostly I think executives is probably the right word that doesn't have a team association or affiliation on the card. So we saw kind of the representative sample there sample, but that's what we're looking for. That's what we're going to do in this little random right here. Oh, I'm on the wrong page. I've got you on the right page, but I was on the wrong page. Yeah, this one's easy. I don't even have to scroll. There's eight teams. They're all eight in there. We're going to randomize this just one time. Whatever team comes up. Actually, we got eight. We've got to randomize it three times. Sorry. Yeah, I'm used to having only to do it once with teams. But yeah, if it's nine or less, we randomize three times. First two don't count. Third one uh, is the one that will tell the story. Okay. So ignore the first one. You can ignore the second one. Here comes our third and final. And it is going to the Birmingham Iron. So Birmingham Iron are going to get, these are just examples, but they're going to get all the cards that are of executives or whatever who do not have specific teams referenced on them. Okay. So that's how that works. Numbered cards, when they're red, they are to 99. That nice green one is to 10. The blue ones here are to 50. And the yellow ones to 25. That one is kind of yellow and green, but it's a future stars. It's also to 25. And everything else, uh, as we already, as we previously called out. Autographs, we have Commanders, Stallions, Hot Shots, Fleet, Legends, Legends again, Fleet times one, Fleet two, Fleet three, Legends, Commanders, Stallions, Hot Shots, Fleet, Legends, Legends again, Fleet, Express, Commanders, and Hot Shots. Okay, kids, that is the break for tonight and the recap. I will, as promised, give you one more peek at what we're going to be breaking here in the days ahead. And then we'll also uh, take another look at shipping for anybody who might have missed it uh, one of the other times we've gone over it tonight. So tomorrow night, two new releases, Leaf Metal Draft Football, which will have 75 hits in it. It's a 15-box case, 5 hits per box. So 75 hits in that one, assuming I did my math right in my head. And uh, a 10-box case of Honors Football. Both new releases for tomorrow. We'll also open a half case of Gypsy Queen Baseball back half of a case all tomorrow night, Friday, starting at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Saturday is also a 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific start time. It'll be Leaf Metal Draft again, as well as Diamond Kings Baseball. On Sunday, we'll do Inception Baseball half case and two cases of Revolution Basketball Chinese New Year Edition. Monday, we'll do Diamond Kings Baseball a uh, full inner case, and Tuesday, a third case of Leaf Metal Draft Football. So that's what our days ahead look like. Once again, your shipping info. Uh, at looking at Monday for Court Kings and AAF Football, as always, if I can get it out to you faster than that, I will. And if something unexpected were to happen, it could possibly go a day later. But Monday is my best estimate. 
the free shipping break, the autographed baseballs. Uh, always project free stuff out no later than a week after the fact, although often it goes earlier, should not be any later than that. Consolation cards don't come into play for AAF. I doubt they do for Court Kings, but if you fail to get a single card in Court Kings, not a base card or anything, you would get consolation cards. It would ship with the rest of the break. If you got skunked in the Onyx break, um, because that is a free shipping break, traditionally I would just hold your consolation cards until the next time you have a package shipping, and I would send it all then. If you want it sooner and you don't want to wait, Hit me up and let me know. Gladly, we'll get you taken care of. So, um, that, I guess, is it for us tonight. So, thanks, everyone, for being here. I appreciate it. And uh, come back and see me tomorrow night. We're going to have a lot of fun between Leaf, Metal Draft Football, Honors Football, and Gypsy Queen Baseball. It's going to be crazy tomorrow. All right, until then, take care, and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye now.